Welcome to Belize, baby. So I just bought some lots. I have no idea what I'm doing. So in this episode, I'm going to find out people who know what they're doing so that you don't have to make the mistakes that I'm going to make along the way. We're about to have a lot of fun. I might fall off this thing, but I'm doing it for you. Let's get it. Well, this is paradise, right? So everybody wants to live on an island surrounded by water in the Caribbean. And I didn't even know Belize existed. So first of all, the people are super kind. Never met, I've been to a country with the board people are nicer. Yeah. When you could go to a place where you don't have to fear leaving the resort, yeah. that's where you want to be. Like I can own a piece of land on an island for this little bit of money and actually buy a block. started my 14 year world tour in 2010 as a backpacker. And my biggest goal back then, I just wanted to see, experience new cultures, the people, and have fun. So while traveling to places like Bali, Thailand, Tulum, I saw the smart people investing in these places before they blew up. But back then, I, mean, I had no knowledge of the game, experience, the network, or simply the money to invest. But it always stuck with me when I heard their stories. Man, I bought this place for 100,000 back then, now it's worth a million. So as my businesses have grown over the years, I started to look to the future. So the idea of just popping bottles and having fun, it's just like, it's less appealing to me these days. Don't get me wrong, I still wanna have fun, but I've been searching for something more, right? The perfect place, an opportunity, and especially timing to create a community and generational wealth for people like us. So in the Bay, where I used to live, the average home is $1.4 million USD. Like my small two bedroom that I had was literally 900,000. Even in places like Atlanta that used to be affordable are no more. And if you want like that picture perfect island, like the Cayman Islands, I was just looking up and the average, average home is $5 million USD. So our Belize video series have now hit 4 million views. And I wanna congratulate those people who bought soon after seeing our episode. I've seen the investments literally go from 40,000 to 50,000 for lots in Secret Beach. And the beautiful part is, the dream isn't out of reach now for most Americans. You can still be a part of this beautiful paradise. So then in March 2023, after a lot of due diligence, I purchased three plots of land in Belize myself. But this was actually the easy part. You know, I don't come from money and I've never invested in real estate internationally. So I'm still learning too. So I've learned in life that I can learn from my own mistakes, which can literally wipe you out at times, or I can learn from experts in their field that are far smarter than me and wiser because they've been in the game learning what to do. So I'm back in belief, yo, the sun is good. You see the boys sweating, right? To track down the people already winning in this game. And so you'll see me having fun with my friends and mentors and exploring what's new in San Pedro and Secret Beach. And I appreciate y'all in the comments with some concerns. So we're gonna be talking to people about the crime, rising sea levels, and natural disasters. So with the number of people inspired to come to Belize, it keeps growing each and every year. So we are seeing new routes added all the time. So the first few days, we just wanted to chill, connect with our old friends, and check out what's happening in and around San Pedro. Walking the streets, I'm immediately reminded why I love this place so much. You know, for people randomly laughing with each other on the side of the road, or people saying literally, simply, yo, good morning, what's up, brother? And just greeting each other like humans. There's like a real sense of community here. So back home in Miami and like my fancy condo building, I can literally travel 54 stories with like 15 people in an elevator and not like a single person literally says a word to each other. And every time I set foot here, I can't help but draw comparisons to Bali and Tulum 
So take Santi, the brains behind top spots in Tulum like Casa Banana. He's now opened this beautiful new spot called Pool Club right here in San Pedro because he sees what's brewing down here. He's one of those visionaries, right? He caught the Tulum wave early and he made it big. Now he's bringing some of that same magic to Belize. So the daytime at the club, it's like a relaxing oasis. And in the evening, you might not even recognize that you're at the same place. It's straight vibe. The mixologist, yo, straight artist. And the food, I would say it's kind of still finding its feet. But like anything new, give it some time. I mix it in with the hot sauce if you want a little, a little flame to it. My name is Maxi Sainz. I'm the owner of Maxi's. I've always been in the, the restaurant industry. My um, grandmother is the owner of one of uh, the most famous restaurants here, LV's Kitchen, and I grew up in, in that industry, or, or my entire family has been around it. The greatest gift is, is meeting a lot of different people. So, you know, we get staff uh, from all over the country in San Pedro, which is something beautiful to see. Well, we're known for our food, we're known for our drinks, trying to treat every, every table like it's our only table. It's just something that we try to do that I think most places forget. We try to interact with everybody like it's our first and last customer, you know? So I did give the guarantee to Jabril that he's gonna get a fish today. I need to get out there and do my best. We just pulled up to a local dive spot here. If you don't know about the Belize Barrier Reef, it extends the entire length of the country. They actually renamed it the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef because it even passes Belize. It's 181 miles of pure, pristine beauty. And yeah, we're gonna dive in and try to get Jabril to accomplish the goal of spearing a fish. Let's get it, baby. So last time we had the goal of catching a fish, I mean, we caught a fish, but it wasn't the fish we were looking for. This time, we'll be different. I guarantee it. Oh, baby! He go! <laughs> Yo! We did get a fish. Yes! And more importantly, clean the oceans. We got some plastic and a fish. Yes! So now I caught my uh, first spearfish. This will be one of many. It's as small as my finger, like even camera tricks can't. <laughs> My name is Simone Sleo. We're in the beautiful island of Key Cocker, Belize. For the most part, I have a small guest house tour company, so all that is based around hospitality. Tourism is all I know. I've never really had anything outside of tourism in Belize. And nobody really knows the foundation of, you know, like how hard I had to work to make sure that I could push through. A lot of people don't see what's available in Belize. They don't see the opportunity in Belize. They don't see how much Belize has developed and still has yet to become. And I feel like I can see Belize not just for what it is now, but for where it can be. And I wanna be a part of that growth because Belize is home for me. And I feel like if there's anywhere that I would personally want to invest my life, create businesses and make a life, I think I'd wanna do that here. And that just helps me, it helps the community, it helps, like I help create jobs, I help the whole entire economy here. And I'd rather do that in Belize than anywhere else. We're at the farmhouse in San Pedro, Belize. The, the inspiration came out of, you know, we wanted to have, uh, you know, provide to the community an artisan market, focus on Belizean products, coffee shop, 
and, and, and you know, ju just bring back from our home and bring the idea, the concept, you know, to the island, you know, and there's different farms, right? There is like a, a ton of products made in Belize, you know, there's dairy farms that are grass fed, antibiotic free range, you know, there's meat companies here that do really good quality meats. The list can just go on and on and on and on. Having them made in Belize makes them a little bit more natural, you know, not as processed. So, so we try to not import as much. You know, a every local company, Belizean producer has an opportunity here. The inspiration to move to Mahogany Bay, it was, you know, one, as soon as we opened this place a couple months in, we saw that we had something special going on here, you know? And then we started talking about growth and expansion and where could be our next location. And when we did our market research, Mahogany was number one on our list. We have seen Mahogany grow. We know where it's going and we see how the farmhouse really can fit into that community, how we really can contribute to that community, and who does not want to be a part of Mahogany. So what hasn't changed yet, or opportunities from an investor standpoint? Nightlife is still limited. Transportation is exclusively the buggies, golf carts, delivery apps here, they don't exist. High import taxes on foreign products like liquor. There's no beach club here. And as for Mahogany Bay, Yo, it's literally setting the standard. So this place is leagues ahead of anything else around. And soon, it'll be the spot literally everyone's talking about. And one of the biggest changes is people are building sparks. So I've met folks who are killing it now. Literally just listed their place in Mahogany Bay, and they've already done 30K in bookings in just a month. So now, let's take a look at how things are developing in Mahogany Bay. Yo, things have changed a little bit in Mahogany Bay. This place looks beautiful. Straight vibe. Tell me what's changed. And I've also heard the numbers have changed a little bit too. See, bro, we gotta pump the brakes, bro. I can't go whipping the numbers out right now. You know, we gotta ease into it first. Compare from last trip, you remember we were in an 800 square foot, yeah. two bedroom, one bath home that is completely different than what we're standing in right now. Yeah. So. We've gone from smaller wood homes in here to larger concrete homes like this one. So this is a three bed with a loft up top. It's got a guest home out front. You can see the finishings in here are high end. You've got beautiful furniture, quartz countertops, enough space to facilitate a big group, which is where the rentals are going when we get into the data and really just upper echelon travel experiences with canal front, boat access, gated security. It, the whole thing is just changing, but the data is what's really exciting. For this house, for example, in the first month, they did yeah. approximately 30,000 in bookings. So right out of the gate, just having something here that's a luxury home that has multiple bedrooms, like when we talked about the breakdown, which is very similar now to what it was then, approximately 80% of our rental inventory is studio, one bed and two bed. So what we talked about then was build the bigger homes and it is working right now. Just to give you some of the data for the island, right now our average daily rate, which is what you look at in a nightly rental market, is about 284. And our average rate in this home right now, in high season, is 800 to 1,000. And in low season, it's at about 500 to 700. So well above what the market performance is and the sign out of the gate is just great. So like right now we're in rainy season, yeah. what would occupancy be for a place like this? And then um, I know we're coming up to December, yeah. what would it be? Um, That's a good then? question. So like right now I'll give you first blanket for the island, we're at approximately 61.3% occupancy. Now that's good, bad, ugly, okay. could be a hostel, could be a villa, could be a condo, all pulled into one. So the occupancy rate is quite high actually, just looking at it there. Right. Um, for a home like this in December, remember this thing just came to the market, it's at about 80% booked with bookings still coming in. January is at the same about 80. When you get into the slower season, probably gonna be closer to the 40 to 50 range, but okay. it's hard to predict at this point because yeah. there's only like 13 five plus bedrooms in the market. So when you look at like places like Tulum, you know how many five bedrooms there are in Tulum? Like thousands. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I got my, my five bedroom for like 250 yeah. in Tulum. I, that's like, oh, <laughs> I'll use your word, that's a dusty one bedroom here. So why are people coming to Belize? And even bigger than that, why do they keep coming back? I mean, the way that these people infuse the word Belize. <laughs> yes! <laughs> in everything. I mean, you won't believe it. In, it's a I Belizean mean, day. I mean, it's, and I said, good. I mean, everybody has it down. 
right. to a T. I mean, I'm just like, be I, I mean, it's, it's just, they have such pride in this country. And that's what that says to me. There's, there's a level of pride of the people that live here. And that means something, right? When you engage with people that love where they live in that way, so much that, so that they're like, look, we hope that you really do enjoy yourself here and tell other people to come here. Like, and that, to me, that says a lot about a place. I've been around the Caribbean for most of the last 10 years, but immediately before coming here, I, I went back home. Uh, baby number one came along. And you know, moving back to a big city, back to Europe, I realized that you know, when I'm waiting for the bus in the morning or if I'm standing in a bar, everyone has the, the city on them, you know, everyone's heads down. And living in a location like this, you know, my, where I live, you know, people have got very little or nothing, but they're happy, the vibe's good, you know, they wave to you in the morning and show what's up. And it's addictive, you know. Being around that, that kind of atmosphere is, uh, is super infectious and it makes, it makes you happy. So. It's an easy, an easy place to live. So my biggest surprise about being out here is like the culture and the diversity of it. I had no idea that there was such like a Latino like influence in like people that have like Latin roots here. It's an English speaking place, but I heard people speaking Spanish and people that look like my aunt and my mom. Puerto Rico is like, it's been developed a lot. And I'm being on this island in San Pedro, it's not as fully like commercialized. So I think what I like is like the place that we're at now reminds me of being at like a big resort in like Tulum or Puerto Rico. But then when we drive off and we're like, oh shoot, we're still like in this cool place that's untouched and there's something very special about experiencing that. Well, tourism is something huge in the country of Belize. I think that's one of our, um, the number one thing that everybody strives to get into. Um, and it's our number one industry in this country. And I think that um, it's something that everybody appreciates and it's something that everybody wants to see grow in this country. So I've read the YouTube comments on the concerns and rightfully so. I remember when I first Googled the country, I saw the crime, you know, the high murder rates. And then so people are also asking about natural disasters, rising sea level. So I'm no expert, but the Four Seasons have literally raised $200 million on their first round on their private island, which will feature the first overwater bungalows in the Western Hemisphere, right? Marriott's building, the Six Senses are building, and so many other major brands. I can't really see the Four Seasons putting up a place that are gonna be washing away millionaires. Now let's talk about crime, right? Belize has a really small population, 400,000 people, and so an undeniably high murder rate per capita. But what those stats don't tell you is most of those murders are concentrated in small pockets and almost exclusively related to gang violence. And that's just like any major city in the US. So first of all, the people are super kind. Never met, I've been to a country with the board people are nicer. Yeah. They are so nice. They're super kind, like that everybody's just easy to deal with. It's a vibe. I, it's a vibe. It's just easy. I think that's the easiest way to put it. To be amongst the locals. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, yes. When you could go to a place where you don't have to fear leaving the resort, yeah. that's where you want to be. Yeah, everybody's Every, just going to wake up no. and say, Mine and <laughs> no, no concern for safety at all. No. 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 As a female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think last time we gave two guys a ride on yeah. our way back from Secret Beach. And they're like, can you take us back in town? And we're like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and they told us all the information, you know, and it's just, it's a lot, it's a completely different environment. It's a lot more friendly, yeah. open, and I think that's also what drew us here. Do you hitchhike in Dallas too or no? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, we're not no. doing that. <laughs> Teaching a man to fish versus giving a man a fish will always be more empowering to a community. So one thing I want to put you on game to is I know so many people outsource to the Philippines, India, but here in Belize, you have a $400 minimum wage per month and it's English speaking, talented people who just need a shot. So Robert was unemployed a couple years ago and Remax gave him the opportunity to shine. Actually, I was jobless. I was walking the beach looking for a job, but I had a few skills under my sleeve, graphic design and so forth, because I was doing freelance before that. Okay. Um, I came into the office, I met Will, 
and um, I showed him what I could do. I had a small little Mac laptop. I showed him what I can do, and uh, I uh, what I, is it that you do? I do graphic design. Um, I build websites. I also start doing music. So I produce. I build beats. I um, I record my own music and so forth. I shoot videos. Well, I start doing that mostly when I start working yeah. for him. So I edited a lot of videos. I do motion graphics. And I'm starting to do animation, so I'm starting to get into a little bit more stuff. So. Yeah. It's a very expensive yeah. career. So if you don't if you don't have someone to finance you or to back you up for your marketing and all that and publicity, then uh, it's something that you, you just not uh, here in Belize. It's, it's yeah. it will definitely won't work. So I said, why not learn the, the entire industry? Reggae song. Huh? You sing? Yeah. Where well, I then? You gonna sing Let's a song it. for? Let's do it. Let's. My channel is called Vidar. Lo tienes que entender, ya no te puedo amar, estoy amando otra mujer, y esto lo lamento, tienes que entender la huella, se la llevo el viento, pasaron los meses y ahora yo estoy más contento. Para todos. And so, just like in any economy, service workers will be getting paid close to minimum wage or a bit of above, but when you're talented, like Robert, you could be making four, five, six, seven times what minimum wage is. Yo, this place got some space for me and my kids? Of course it is. Welcome to the White Hell House. This is a four bedroom, four and a half bathroom, with a large living room and kitchen space. It has a beautiful pool, being 26, 21 square foot house. Man, Lalo, love these high ceilings, crazy. Well, this is the new trend in Mahogany Bay, being in two lots and having a square footage with your pool outside. Let me show you what else is there. You also have a couple of amenities right outside, which one being the outside shower. Secondly, you also have a golf car shed or a car shed. You have a storage unit and of course, a beautiful pristine pool. All right, man, I love it. I got a question, though. Tell me. What if I want my butt cheeks out and now my neighbor can see me here? Do I put up a wall or what, what can I do? Well, the beauty is that you could definitely put some palm trees to make it the perfect oasis and hideaway for you. Folks are traveling from Canada, Europe, US, down to Belize to enjoy what us Belizeans take for granted, which is the sun, the tropics, the beautiful coral reefs, just grabbing a coconut from the coconut tree, sitting down by a hammock. These are the things that everybody pays to do and yet we take it for granted but for one specific thing mostly is that there's a lot of hidden secrets. As in going to the mainland for 15 minutes, you go into the beautiful waterfalls, or maybe go into the Jaguar Reserve. And if you're here in Allen, about 10 minute boat ride, you're swimming with the sharks, you're swimming with fishes about, and one of the best things to do is spend it with the family and friends and the people who you love and enjoy. So Mahogany Bay has been going crazy. People are moving in and building left, right, and center. So they only have 90 lots left, and so soon, the only way that you're going to be able to buy is from existing owners. And when you do that, you're not going to have access to financing all the amazing things that you have right now. And I'm not saying that just because I want you to be a neighbor. I'm really trying to put you on game. So I asked Will at dinner about people building community down here. And he mentioned a couple brothers, Jonathan Martin and Stephen Wilder, who had literally bought the block down here and they just left Belize a few days before back to the U.S. So I said, yo, call them. I need to vibe with them. Go ahead. Yo, what you going to say? Are you coming tomorrow for booking ticket? Listen, I'm going to my No, 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 no. You, 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 so long. It's so long. Yes or no? I will be there. All right. I'm going to see you tomorrow, bro. I'll see you tomorrow, bro. Oh. So we took a beautiful boat ride to Secret Beach and I chopped it up with my new friends and got put on game. But you can also drive from the other side of the island to Secret Beach as well. And then, welcome to Secret Beach, known for its bad roads, limited accommodation, and a handful of beach shacks. But they do got the crystal clear waters and the best sunsets on the island. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? <laughs> but I just gotta keep it 100 with you. But that's what it is right now. One of the beautiful things about life is experience and having a vision. So most people would come to Secret Beach and just see the above. But what they don't see is the future of Amberger's Keys unfolding right before their eyes. So more roads have been built here in the last six months than in the last 10 years. And businesses and accommodations are starting to pop up. So Trevor built this simple home in Secret Beach. 
and now he's making four grand a month and he just listed this place. Uh, so I picked up the lot that this house is on. About four years ago, I paid 18,500 US for the lot. The lot this that the one. house is on is worth about 70 to 75,000 US because it's along the main road. At the time when I bought the lot, it really was ground level, like there was nothing here. <laughs> Uh, I, I built the house about eight months ago. It took me six months to get the house done. Um, my total build cost was about 160k US. Um, at the time, I didn't know if I was going to live in the house. Didn't know if I was going to rent it out. But I really, I saw the um, the progress. And just geographically on this island, there's no other direction for the development mm. to expand. You can't build any further east. Can't build yeah. any further south. And then of course, Secret Beach. You've got the sunsets no sargasm, beautiful water. So I knew there was a market for it. Um, I got the house up on Airbnb about four months ago. Um, it's renting for 175 US per night and it's booked solid for the next three months. Got about 10 five-star reviews. So, so far so good. Um, I'm planning on repeating this on other lots, just okay. given how well this is doing so far, but it's two bedroom, one bath. It's about 800 square feet. Nobody's really out here still, but there's so much more. When I was here like 18 months ago, like you said, you've built eight months ago. Yeah. 18 months ago when I came, there was nothing. <laughs> That's right. So it's all, um, all eco-friendly, all off-grid, and no power bills. Oh, no power bills. No, it's, uh, it's all off-grid. So property tax is practically nothing. Yeah. Talking $90 a year in property tax. So net, I'm around 3,500 to 3,750 conservatively per month. Just off of your investment, you could actually like live off of your investment. Yeah, 100%. And again, this is a very basic house. So you could, um, you could do something a little more substantial to sleep more people. Yeah. Um, in terms of the net income, I'm looking at about around 40 grand a year. So that's not so bad for, and then, for a two bedroom house. It's nice, but I was like, in Tulum? Yeah. Mm. No, the, so if this house was um, in any of these other markets that are already saturated, it would be completely empty. So here in Belize, there's, last time I checked, there's about 2,500 units on Airbnb, and we keep adding all these direct flights. So we yeah. have direct flights coming in from JFK starting in January, daily direct from LAX. So the amount of people that are getting off airplanes and yeah. coming here keep growing but the amount of units in the rental inventory aren't keeping up. It's exceeded my expectations. Like I didn't know what to expect when I first put it up on Airbnb, but the demand is definitely there. Um, there's a lot of people that they'll stay in town and every single day they'll drive out here mm -hmm. to go to the beach and there's not a lot of options to stay out here. So it's, it's a great place to invest. I've got big plans here. So I bought two oversized lots, which is about four times the size of my regular lot in Mahogany Bay. And I'm envisioning a community-based luxury experience. So I want you to visualize the first passport-heavy property, a beautiful open space with an inviting pool, relaxing jacuzzi, a fireplace, sanctuary-type bedrooms, steps away from the beach, where you can be a part of an intimate community or you can rent the whole oasis for yourself, a fusion of luxury and community. And to get a taste of the first ever luxury in Secret Beach, I tracked down Ryan and his wife. We just had the best smoothie I've ever had in Belize. I could feel the love in it. Yeah, everything we do here, put a little love in. I'm uh, from Southern California originally. Okay. So, uh, we've been down here for a couple years now. So everybody wants to live on an island, surrounded by water, in the Caribbean, and I didn't even know Belize existed. And I think I was just kind of getting wiped out of grinding, putting 60 hours in a week, 70 hours in a week to survive. Yeah. Or, you know, kind of step up above the survival and kind of start <laughs> doing things you want to do, right? Yeah. And I was just like, man, there has to be something a little better you know, instead of this repetitious mm -hmm. um, rat race. And I was like, let's go, let's go, let's step out of the comfort and try something else. So uh, that's kind of how I ended up here. So this is the nicest place I've been to in Secret Beach so far. When I came here 18 months ago, there was pretty much like nothing. They had a few like, you know, beach bars, mm -hmm. but I see the growth happening. What is it? that your beautiful place here is bringing that is not here to Secret Beach. We're trying to trying to bring a little bit, a little touch of luxury. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of step it up, have those um, creature comforts, that style. Um, we're also bringing wellness to the side of it. We want you to be able to step out of your normal everyday 
I, as I put it, grind, mm -hmm. you know, the worries of life and what you have to do and your responsibilities. And we take you here and kind of wash all that away and kind of give you peace of mind. A lot of people don't know, like we use solar and we collect rainwater for, um, for all the utilities around here. If I wanted to get an oceanfront place like yeah. now, um, what do they typically go for? Like if you're getting a lot. So what, what I'm seeing is anywhere from 429 to like 500. Okay. Um, there's, I mean, there's some that pop up that are acre with like 200 feet of waterfront that go for 1.5. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I got in here three years ago, so I got really yeah. lucky. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that is part of, um, you know, pulling the trigger, having Timing. the belief, and seeing the vision Absolutely. of where a place goes. Yeah. So having the best place in Secret Beach is a great thing, mm -hmm. but it also is competition, right? It is competition. So people now are going to constantly step up the bar of quality and experience. How do you feel about that? I, I mean, I, I love it. Like, I, I want people to be able to come over here and build these beautiful places and, you know, step up the, the, the scale of building and the luxury. And I'm like, I'd be excited if somebody were to build something like this or better. I'm like, yeah, bring it on. This is what we need over here, so. Yo, a lot has changed in these last 18 months. Had that amazing smoothie. This place is fresh. I see the elevation happening in the quality. I mean, as you saw when you first came down here, there was a lot of Belizean hardwood homes, which are great, and it was a great foundation, but it's amazing to see stuff like this. So we're at Ishel right now, and this is a boutique resort. Then they have four rental units on the front here. It's a just beautiful, modern aesthetic. And when you're coming to Secret Beach, this is the spot I would say I, I can't recommend enough to check out. I'm more of a numbers kind of guy too. I'm always trying to figure out what stuff costs. So if I'm getting an oceanfront lot, here, right? People love to travel and have an oceanfront. Benefits to being a little further in and benefits yeah. being here. What will something like this if I get a lot oceanfront? So recent comps show lots in this area around 500,000 in that range. Um, the key difference between these lots and stuff you might find interior is you're probably not gonna have that developer financing, mm -hmm. but I mean the benefit is these pristine views. Uh, with that being said, the beachfront lots have also seen a pretty significant appreciation at this point. Yeah. There's still more to come, but the interior lots haven't really gone through that insane push yet. Mm -hmm. So some people might look at the interior lots and say, you know what, I don't have to put as much out of pocket. I'm still on the island, I can finance it. But for some people, they're saying, you know what, I need that view. Well, we're looking at it right now. This is like what dreams are made of. So it's a big change from what you saw before, Jabril. As you can see, they've got four concrete casitas. The beds look out directly at the water. Each one has its own dipping pool. So from what you saw last trip, it's changed a lot. Bro, I see. <laughs> I mean, look at this place. It's just quality, refreshing. You just, you just feel comfortable here. Right? So I've been talking with experts about everything, from selecting the right materials, architects, to sorting out financing. And it's all about learning from people who have just been there and done that. So we're here in Secret Beach. And so I heard you are the person I have to talk to if I want to make my visions come to life um, as far as building homes. And this is not the first thing that you've done. I heard about, you, I've actually seen some of your projects in Tulum, but for people who don't know, what are some of the most inspiring projects that you've been a part of in Tulum? Well, you know that Tulum is like a trendy place yeah. nowadays. So, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we've been able to create some of our amazing projects there. We have designed not only houses, but also some apartments that are okay. beachfront. Those are amazing. Some restaurants too. Um, those restaurants have like a very cool vibe. The vibe that we are going to yeah. create here too. What's the name of this project again? The Habitat Project. Habitat project, mm -hmm. many different homes. What is it that you're bringing here to um, Secret Beach that's not here and is needed? Why here? You could be anywhere in the world. I think that we are really keen on making like a mixture between architecture and nature. So the idea is to start creating uh, homes and houses that are really in touch and really connected with what's going on in the outside. Mm -hmm. That's why we are so keen on having really great landscapings in all of our projects. Greenery for us is everything. So that's the idea, like to start making famous this concept of 
making a, a good bond between the inside and the outside. Okay. Why, why here versus like maybe a more developed place? Well, to be honest with you, um, I've, I've been to other developed areas, but I like the idea of a project, of it feeling like a project. And so that's exactly what we saw, right? We saw, we, we're designers by trade, so okay. we, we, we saw, we had vision and we can see it. And so when we start getting um, more advice from the locals and starting piecing things together, of course, starting a Pinterest mood board and like, okay, we can actually do this, but just make sure we do all our homework. So we like projects. I think we also saw the potential here. Uh, we saw the growth, the opportunity, um, and we quickly recognized that if we didn't do it now, this is probably something we would regret in the future. Yeah. Basically seeing it, being there, being able to walk on it and put things into perspective was a lot comforting than like looking at a, a little block online, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm glad we came out here. I view this as a legacy purchase. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very big on that and you know, I wanted to start something fresh and that we can hopefully pass down. And so I thought this was the perfect opportunity. We had spoke to a lot of locals while we were here and uh, we were quite shocked at how affordable the opportunity looked. And so I just did my homework, she did hers, cross-reference, and then I just happened to pull the trigger. What, what inspired you to become an architect? And yeah, just like the why. Architects have the key to the city, right? You can't do anything without an architect. So. Yeah. That's how I saw my way to kind of get inside. I'm not, I'm not the finance person, I'm not the attorney, but I know the role that I play is needed. And at, and at some point you're gonna need my voice because I know, I know communities. I know how people want to live. I know how they have lived. I was in Harlem when I graduated and I'm in the middle of the start of gentrification, right? Mm -hmm. Harlem has always been big, but it's been mostly black culture. So once, once Clinton came, that was, a, that was a symbol that it's safe to come to Harlem. There's value in Harlem. And so being in a position where I'm learning my craft at that point, Harlem is probably one of the first major cities or areas to be gentrified. And living through that was like, was crazy because you saw people, more and more people, the block I grew up on, hardly no one lives on that block anymore. And we come around back for holidays and you think every block is like that. So now you see people that before they wouldn't get off the train or they would get off the train before they got to 110th Street. If they was on 110th Street after that, it's because they got lost. Now it's like, oh, we everywhere, which, which is cool. It's, 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 it's bittersweet because yes, people, I used to get mad, people like, yo, Harlem is popping now. It's like 2007. I'm like, Harlem been popping. Been popping. <laughs> Harlem been popping, what are you talking about? But you know, when you, when you start understanding more, like I got a crash course in how yeah. politics work, how building constructs, like how cities want to do things. And so it really told me like, yo, I can't do, Harlem's gone, yeah. it's gone. So where else, now that I'm equipped, I got resources, I have relationships, I have a skill set, I have my own business, where can I go and affect change and be a part of transformation because one of my taglines is architecture redefining places that are unknown like introducing architects to places that have never experienced architecture we've been living and never knew what good design is so coming out to secret beach i'm looking i'm like man the beach is beautiful the vibes is amazing like everybody like i said everybody's always happy drinks is always flowing i probably drunk the most out here this year <laughs> than, any other, than any other place. <laughs> Just think about it as a visionary and thinking about places like Tulum or even, or even local, right? You come here, depending on what it is that you want to do, you can kind of do whatever. If you got a business, you got a restaurant you want to bring out here, it's an opportunity to do that. As an architect, to me, everybody's my client. Mm -hmm. At, they may not be that day, but anybody who wants to do something who's ambitious, they're gonna come talk to me at some point. And so, first trip I came, I went back, told the team, I said, yo, we might have to get an office in Belize because I know smart people are gonna start buying stuff out there and they're gonna need people that they can relate to, especially coming from America, it's people that they trust. I'm not saying that people out here you can't trust, but everybody likes somebody that they can relate to, that they can mm -hmm. say, oh, I've seen your work, I can, mm -hmm. I can go touch you, I can have a meeting with you. And so, but aside from that, I'm like, I don't want to be left behind. So I bought me some land as well. So 
Not only are we doing architecture art, but we also doing development. So I'm Coco from Coco and Breezy. I am one of the co-founders of Coco and Breezy Eyewear. We're also in over 600 stores around North America. I'm a DJ and producer. So I have music that has charted all the biggest dance billboard charts. And I travel the world playing for amazing festivals. I'm also a co-founder of The Lorca, which is a really cool real estate project. Like people in my family, they, they don't own homes. Like we're like the first ones to break our generational curses. When you think about buying real estate or going into a project that you don't know about, go in it with friends. You might find something that's like $100,000 and you're like, you know what, I don't want to I don't want to do my own shit. Like, let me let me find two or three friends and like, we can only spend like 25. Like there's so much you can do and not even like risk the money. So I think that like we as like first, being black people, sometimes we're afraid to talk about finances. We're afraid to talk about sharing. We're afraid to talk about like our egos can be twisted based on like what we learned and what we grew up on. We talk about community a lot. I'm all about community as well. And so what I've noticed is you go into a space or you go into a project with having vision and when there's community involved, that vision can get bigger, even if they're not part of your actual project. So of course, after we bought our projects, or our, after we bought our houses, we're like, friends, y'all need to like buy upstate too, you know what I'm saying? And so people, more people started buying up there and in that area, and more people started traveling up there as well. So when I, I'm here in Belize, and I see that there's such a beautiful community of people, and I'm seeing more and more people come together, and you all are like, okay, there's a blank canvas, I see trees and weeds and like grass. And the big part is that you all are visionaries and you're like, okay, we can build something. Just say, what you say? I said that we are, we've already bought here. I've already bought here. I bought down at Secret Beach. I bought down at Puta Azul South. I have a girlfriend on the phone right now who's yes, also now a nurse now purchasing now. land. My girlfriend, who's also a nurse today, she just bought a property in Secret Beach that she just went into escrow for. I have family in the townhouse who's yeah, trying no to problem. figure out um, how to get money down I here to, so they can uh, purchase before we there, leave too. So. so You said you already felt like you know me how. How do I know you? What are you talking about? <laughs> Mr. Uh, Bali Man, yeah, Mr. Changu, <laughs> Mr. Jimbaran. <laughs> we are staying in Changu, Ubu, and Jimbaran because of you. Next year, we've been trying to get there since the pandemic, and we can finally go, you know, next year. So that's how I know you. All over. I follow you. I know who you are. Wow, it's such a. Like we just finished, I don't know if they're telling you, we're shooting a video right mm -hmm. now. Uh, why people should come down to Belize. That's actually, what was it for you? That would be I mean, the I'm, most. I'm always why, 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 okay. why Belize for you? So first, let me let me start with this. When I saw uh, that you were telling people to come down here, I was like, oh no, they don't buy up all the lots. I still need to get more lots. No, don't tell anybody. This is my secret. No, but I wanted to buy down here because I've been looking uh, down I'll here for the past like seven years. And I was that, looking that at it and I was goal. scared, you know, I was like, the lots the are 10,000, 10, 15,000, uh, that doesn't sound right, like, like is it a scam, week, like, what's going on? Week, so, um, five years ago, on, I was looking at them again, they started going up again. I just would not press the button because of fear, you know, I didn't know that you can just purchase things in another country and it would just be smooth sailing. So when the pandemic hit and then we had, you know, a president in office and, you know, we're unsure of things. I, I knew that I had to have a place that I could bring my family that was safe if anything went down, that that had um, groceries, that had that grew their own produce, that had their own livestock, that could fish, you know, someplace that was sustainable where I didn't have to worry about my family. So I told all my family, look, I'm buying property in Belize. Uh, we couldn't get down here when I purchased because the, the world was shut down, but I bought it on faith and it's been the best thing I've ever done. Congratulations on your appreciation for real. In both ways. First of all, I've been in real estate since 2004. So that's when I bought my first piece of property. So I've kind of done it all out in real estate and uh, to build wealth, you want to make as much as possible. So you kind of always have to be ahead of the curve ahead of the curb. So I'm from Jersey, so you know, you're familiar with North. North is in a whole renaissance revolution. See where the price of homes are just across the country. So one thing that I tell people is stay ahead of the curb, because imagine if you would have bought a house in Jersey five, 10 years ago, you would have been able to double your money now. So being ahead of the curb, you can't get it when it's already here. Yeah. So by me coming to Belize and seeing like this is the last 
untouched stone in the Caribbean. It's like an open canvas. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn. You know what I mean? I came down here on a humbug after COVID. I just needed to get out. You know what I'm saying? Like I can own a piece of land on an island for this little bit of money. I was sold. So I had been looking around because I wanted the public, Costa Rica, been all over the place. One of the problems that I was having is I don't speak Spanish. So it's hard enough trying to read a contract in English, <laughs> less known in Spanish. And then, you know, a lot of these countries are, you know, third world countries. So things are very sketchy. You need a great attorney. One of the benefits was coming from why I came here was everybody speaks English. So I at least can read the contract and then have my attorney back home and review it. You know what I mean? So that was a plus. Also, the guys that I linked up with, they were branded under Remax. And so Remax is a brand that we're used to in the U.S. So, and I tell people that all the time, like, you know, U.S. investors are very skeptical of scams because that's all that's thrown in our face all the time. Scam, scam, scam. People from third world countries, they call in your house with all these accents. People from the U.S. are very afraid of scams, but these guys had the branding of Remax, which was the company that I was familiar with yeah. that gave me an extra bit of or extra layer of confidence and to be able to do business. Also, it was it's very close. So, you know, I can, if I, I can be home in two hours, I can be back in the States for two hours. So I come down here and I got some medical issues or, you know, I'm older, I'm an old man and I got to get back. I could be right to Dallas, Houston and, you know, quick. One thing that's dope was you don't have that opportunity like you have here. One, there's not a lot of land left to be able to do that. And the entry price is so high. So when I saw this, I was like, what? I got an opportunity. I have a construction background. I have a construction company. So I have an opportunity to do a deal and work with my brother who's an architect. So you telling me I can go somewhere, buy a block. We can come with our own vision. It's a blank canvas. And we got a chance to be the first to do it and actually buy a block of nothing and put what we want. Yeah. We're not buying something that's already been built up. We're developing ourselves. We're young black men that are, we ain't young. Are we? I'm young. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to add, to add to what he's saying, really also understanding who's in Belize, right? Like first thing we started doing was, what's the community, who's here? What's, what is the tradition? What is the culture? So like even learning about right. Restaurants we go to, we have conversations and like, right, we may want, also what you didn't say, we have a mixed use um, location. So we're able to put commercial space in there. So now if we're thinking outside of the box, let's say we have a, a restaurant that's that's doing well, but maybe they could do well, they could do better, or they can expand or they can have another platform. We're thinking about connecting with community in that way by providing opportunities, not just for us and our people, but also for the people that for the people that's here because you can't like the type of the type of work I do everything is community based everything I'm all about improving my community and making what's there better not not leaving some people leave the hood because they don't like it and 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 that's that's what happened with a lot of us when we think about all these communities like Harlem for instance people were leaving because it was bad everybody moved down south instead of staying right there and developing what was there and so if you think about coming here we have to have we have to have um, that level of consciousness to understand like what we are doing and how it affects the people that's here. And so everything I do is not many black architects. So I'm thinking about that. Every time I have a conversation, people that look like me, younger people, I'm making sure they know that what I'm doing, where I come from, because anything is possible. And like I think your brother said a year ago, you never even thought of Belize. Shit, eight months ago, I, I didn't think about Belize until he started calling me. Next thing you know, I'm here. Next thing you know, we think about opportunities, hitting up other people, having compatible skill sets. Hey, what do you bring to the table so that we could do this? Our other partner, landscape. So we we covering all the bases. And that's how y'all having these conversations with each other. You at the bar spending money. Ha have a conversation about what you can do together because it, it's, it's really for everybody. And, and it feels good to be able to do something. Which, you know what I mean, with mm -hmm. your boys, like, you know, and really, you know, it's just an all around good feeling. One of the things that I liked about here before we get out of here is 
they have so like the culture here is so it's a melting pot. So you got, you know, the Mayan influence, you have the Hispanic influence, you got um the Mexican people, you've Garifunas. got the Garifunas, which are the you know, the Africans that migrated here. They have a whole story behind them. You understand? You got the people from um what's the next country over? Um Guatemala. You got the Guatemalan influence. So you got every, you know, all of these different cultures, influences, the the Creole, you got the jungle, you got the the reef, you know, the the barrier reef, one of the best places to snorkel and scuba dive all in one place. Come on, man. This is no brand. And think about how, yo, this is, I've never been to a place where everybody is nice. (laughs) Like, it's not, it's not just in your resort or in your hotel. Everybody is nice. Everybody is is good vibes only. So, whenever you're and 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 thinking about that melting pot, sometimes that could be difficult. Where because of cultural differences that people don't get along, I rarely see people arguing. I will say something to it, and it's from like the root of the country. So if you look at their flag, on their flag, they have a um, someone of a black descendant and someone of a Latino descendant. If you look at the images, and so in the root, it's all about you know the you know the melting pot of the culture. And so when I saw that, I was like, "Yo, it was just beautiful." Buying the block is no longer just lyrics in a song. It's a reality that we're creating here with Passport Heavy and family. And like the famous poet Sean Carter said, "Wish I could take it back to the beginning." I could have bought a place in Dumbo before it was Dumbo for like two million. That same building today worth like 25 million. Guess how I'm feeling, Dumbo. And then a quick message for my Belizean brothers and sisters. While great opportunity is gonna come from tourism, I want you to know you hold great power because I don't wanna see you make the same mistakes that I've seen in my community where everyone else sees a value in my community and we end up selling it prematurely. And I've seen that happen in Chicago, Oakland, Harlem, London, you name it. And I know I'm buying land here, but my advice, if you have the opportunity, hold on to your land, talk to your family, support each other. This is your home, right? And in 10 years, you have the opportunity to create generational wealth like no job would ever give you the opportunity to most likely. Like anywhere in the world, change is always going to happen. So sure, with any development comes the good and the bad. But I'm convinced that with the right blend of tourism, local wisdom, expat knowledge, we can build something truly remarkable here. So I've spent over $1.6 million out of my own pocket over the last 14 years making these episodes that we put on YouTube for free. YouTube has paid me $182,000 over that time for the views, but I've put my money where my mouth is and I've invested my own money into Belize because I see the vision and I've missed the boat way too many times before. And you rarely see a sponsor on our page. That's because we reject like 99% of them. And I'm fortunate though, right? I've made millions in my other business ventures and this has given me the freedom to live out my passion of travel in a way most could only dream about. But while giving so much value and that's never gonna change. And then when I reached out to some brands that I love and that I use, many of the brands said, oh, but your people, they don't spend money. (laughs) But then after our last real estate episode, Will got in touch and said, yo, your audience has spent over 7 million US dollars in five short months. I was like, damn. (laughs) He was like, bro, you bring so much value. I gotta give something back to you. You're providing more value than any project that I've ever done in my real estate career. And I said, you know what? I'm paying out of pocket to make these episodes all around the world. Everyone's eating except me. From thousands of people going to Mona Lisa and Cabo, they did reach out and say, yo, you gotta come back. You can stay at one of our properties for free or have a meal. I was like, thank you. Or my suit tailor in Thailand making over a million dollars to Captain Tim and Sausalito making multiple six figures and I never took a dime. And that's from cities and countries literally making millions to hundreds of millions of dollars from Passport Heavy. And so I spoke with Will, and so Passport Heavy will be receiving a referral commission, which is great. And I was like, I know we deserve it. We add in value, why why shouldn't we get paid? 
right? But what this will enable us to do is actually bring you more episodes because these are expensive. And that's the reason why we only do three, four episodes a year because they cost anywhere from 30 to $100,000 to make, which sounds crazy, but we have a whole team, a staff, a production. We don't treat it like a little vlog. We're like, yo, no, we make movies, baby. And I've always done it for the love and that's what's made us who we are. But now we're gonna be able to afford to bring you more because we're directly gonna be supported by the value that we actually provide. And the thing is, 99% of businesses will still get promoted for free because I wanna make sure it's still an authentic review. So if I like something, great. If I don't, I'm like, yo, they ain't the ones. But anyways, I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. And so if you actually wanna find out more about the real estate because as we travel around the world, like I said, our minds have elevated. And then Will literally has a whole YouTube channel dedicated to real estate and what's happening in Belize. And then we have some other links in the description where we have sat down with people who have moved here, live here, talking about their experience. So if you wanna go into the nitty gritty, we've put a few links below. Hope you enjoy them. And hey, I better see your ass in Belize. Let's go. So. What you're looking at is my lot. And so basically, I can already visualize it with the wind. So what I'm gonna have right here, an elevated deck. I'm gonna have a beautiful pool, infinity. Uh, so infinity pool, jacuzzi, nice little fireplace. Watch the sunset, you know, with people that I love. And yeah, just enjoy this for a long time to come. Right now you see dirt. And in a few years, you're gonna see a beautiful home that I get to enjoy. And also, I will Airbnb it, VRBO it, so y'all can enjoy it too. What's the craziest passport and everything? First thing we've met so far. Man, I have a lot of people come in the shop when they see the video, so they 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 missed the big part about the appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. I ain't gonna lie. They missed the big part. <laughs> that shit is funny, man. I'm like, did you guys see the appointment? Like, no. I'm like, oh shit, man. Why don't you guys have classes? Today? <laughs> Draymond Green in the building. You were asking. Say hi. Oh, you weren't there. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh.